It's Friday, February 17th, 2023. Welcome to episode 41 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, Alameda Unified School District votes on Bay Farm Middle School. The Transportation Commission endorses Lincoln Avenue, Marshall Way, Pacific Avenue corridor improvements. The North Housing Senior Apartments Project gets a $20 million boost. The storms that started our year highlight the problem of improperly secured boats in the estuary. Another walking history tour is upon us and your chance to participate in San Francisco Beer Week without even leaving the island. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story on Tuesday, the fate of Bay Farm Middle School was decided by Alameda Unified School District. The verdict, the school was to be phased out beginning next school year when there will be no incoming sixth grade class. Rising 7th and 8th graders will be given the option to continue at Bay Farm, meaning that the final middle school class will graduate from the program in spring of 2025. During the meeting, it was noted by Superintendent Pascal Scuderi and others that enrollment at the middle school has been in decline and has not met enrollment targets. Sixth grade was added just about a decade ago. Later, the decision was made to add 7th and 8th grades. Part of the approval process hinged on the 6th grade class enrolling 60 students per year. Bay Farm has only reached that milestone twice. While some parents did protest the phase-out, others were supportive, noting that the middle school used up a disproportionate share of resources. A recurring theme of public comment, as we've mentioned on earlier episodes of the postcast, is the perceived lack of communication from the district. The initial closure proposal was announced on January 10th of this year, despite the district having apparently discussed it internally much earlier. In the end, the vote to phase out the middle school was 4-1, to one, with Gary Lim voting no. Also at the meeting, the board voted 4-1 to one to change the funding sources for certain programs at Earhart and Maya Lin Elementary Schools from general fund to alternate sources. Ryan Lalonde cast the no vote on that measure. District officials have stated that cost savings from the phase out will be directed to programs such as full-day kindergarten and elementary school specialist staffing. For full details of the meeting, see Karen Jensen's article at alamedapost.com slash news. At its meeting on Wednesday the 15th, the City of Alameda Transportation Commission endorsed the Lincoln Avenue Marshall Way Pacific Avenue Corridor Improvements Project. David Parisi and Bree Adams from Parisi Transportation Consultants presented updates and design concepts for the full three-mile corridor. The project aims to implement safety enhancements along the major crosstown thoroughfare via intersection visibility improvements, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, and a road diet. The design includes three proposed roundabouts. Commissioners, city staff, public commenters, and Parisi all agreed that the multi-lane roundabout at Lincoln, Wilma Chan, and 8th is not an ideal solution. The commission endorsed the project on the condition that Parisi further investigate that intersection. The project comes before the City Council for endorsement at its meeting on Tuesday, April 4th. For further details, including links to proposal drawings, see Ken Durr's article at alamedapost.com slash news. Ever since the Navy granted the land back to the Housing Authority of the City of Alameda in 2019, we've been hearing about the North Housing Community Development Project. This week, the project received a major boost in the form of $20.6 million from the State of California Department of Housing and Community Development to help build North Housing Senior Apartments, affordable housing for residents aged 62 and older. The development represents the first phase of the long-planned North Housing Project. This senior property will include 64 affordable apartments for seniors 62 years and older and will have 40 studios, 23 one-bedroom apartments, and a two-bedroom apartment for an on-site manager. Fittingly, for land that was once held by the Navy, 25% of the residents at North Housing Senior Apartments will be veterans in need of supportive housing. North Housing Senior Amenities will include a community room, indoor mail room and lobby, on-site parking, on-site laundry, bike parking, Wi-Fi, and on-site property management. AHA's social services partner, LifeSteps, will provide case management and resident services that connect seniors to resources such as food, medical, rental assistance, transportation, social activities, just to name a few. The property is located off Mosley Avenue near Alameda Landing. Look for construction to begin late in the year or early in 2024. Details, including a link to sign up for updates at alamedapost.com slash news. The storm systems that ravaged the Bay Area in late December and early January brought flooding, mudslides, sinkholes, and raw sewage discharge into the Bay. These storms also brought another problem into sharp focus, poorly moored boats on the Oakland-Alameda estuary that unmoored and collided with the Coast Guard Island Bridge. According to Coast Guard Chief Petty Officer Levi Reed, the sailboats did not cause damage to the structure. 
CPO Reed said the Coast Guard is aware of numerous abandoned vessels in the estuary and is, quote, actively monitoring the situation for potential environmental, navigation safety, and security concerns, end quote. Such assurances have done little to ease the frustration and worry of individuals who live, work, and play along the estuary. Alameda Marina Harbormaster Eileen Zed said the presence of abandoned vessels and anchored out vessels, individuals illegally living aboard those boats on the estuary, have, quote, gotten out of hand, end quote, and pose a serious safety hazard. Many of those anchored out vessels are unregistered and poorly maintained, frequently leaking fuel into the water. Trash, debris, and sewage are often dumped directly into the estuary. The anchor outs, Zed explains, are usually not experienced mariners and lack the training to properly maneuver or secure their boats. The problem has been with us for some time. In 2013, a multi-agency cleanup was undertaken with over 350 tons of debris and 35 truckloads of concrete removed from the estuary. That effort was spearheaded by Brock DeLapp, who had served as harbormaster at both Oakland Marina and Alameda Marina in the past decade. A smaller cleanup took place in 2019 with Oakland Police Marine Patrol Unit removing and crushing as many as 10 abandoned or derelict boats. But in late 2019, two former anchor outs filed a lawsuit against the city of Oakland, OPD Marine Patrol, and Sean Alexander Marine Services, seeking compensation for their vessels and personal property on board. The plaintiffs alleged that the city of Oakland and OPD failed to provide, quote, adequate notice and opportunity for hearing, end quote, before OPD seized their vessels and therefore violated due process. In July of 21, the Oakland City Council authorized a $280,000 settlement of that lawsuit. Since the settlement, Brock DeLapp claims law enforcement has been hesitant in dealing with anchor outs. Despite this, Alameda PD's Marine Unit removed approximately 11 vessels from the estuary in 2022, according to Sarah Henry, the public information officer for the city. As of mid-January, there were no sunken or derelict boats on the Alameda side of the estuary. The achievement, the result of a $100,000 grant from the Division of Boating and Waterways, allowing APD to remove the vessels without tapping into city funds. Neither the city of Oakland nor the Oakland Police Department responded to the Post request to comment on this story. Marjorie Sechko, a coach who works primarily with high school and college-age rowers at Oakland Athletic Rowing Society, has noted that rowers using the estuary have in fact collided with anchored-out vessels and capsized on numerous occasions. There's even more to unpack on this story, which combines the protection of the bay, the health of the estuary, the homeless situation, and more. For a complete look at all the moving parts, see Kender's article at alamedapost.com slash news. You asked for it, we listened. Coming later this month, Dennis Ebenoski will lead another walking history tour, this time focused on the Gold Coast architecture of Caroline and Weber Streets. You'll have your choice, Saturday or Sunday. Join us at 10 a.m., either Saturday the 25th or Sunday the 26th, You'll not only learn about architecture, but also about the woman for whom Caroline Street is named. Details and tickets at alamedapost.com slash tours. San Francisco Beer Week winds down this weekend, but you don't have to head across the water to enjoy the goings-on. A couple of pretty cool events right here on the island. Saturday evening, join Almanac Beer Company for the fourth annual Almanac and Friends as they release limited edition collaboration beers with six different Bay Area breweries and a wide range of styles from triple IPA to Irish Stout. Details on Almanac's Facebook page. On Sunday, you'll find Faction and Alameda Island Brewing, along with others, opening their taps at the Pacific Pinball Museum for pinball and pints. At recording time, there were some tickets left. This does tend to sell out. Details on Pacific Pinball's Facebook page and their website. Please note that the museum entrance on Sunday will be restricted to those 21 and over who are participating in pinball and pints. Lots more going on this weekend. AlamedaPost.com slash events, your source for events of interest. Head to Phoenix Art Salon on Friday for visual arts and musical performances. Also on Friday, Not That Into You, a queer benefit concert, takes place at Studio 23 Gallery on Ensenal, benefiting AUSD's LGBTQ Roundtable. Alterina Playhouse concludes their run of Slow Food. The Alameda Film Festival continues through the weekend. On Saturday, head to Ensenal Beach to help the East Bay Regional Park District with sand dune habitat restoration. Pull some weeds, benefit the local ecosystem, and students can earn community service hours. Registration is required. Rhythmic Cultural Works brings the bayou to the bay as they celebrate Mardi Gras with Shell and Friends Saturday night. On Sunday, get lunch and do some good as A La Mediterranean Grill presents a fundraiser for earthquake victims in Syria and Turkey, noon to 5 at the Healing Garden on Webster. Again, details for these events at alamedapost.com events. Thank you for supporting nonprofit news for Alameda. See all the benefits of membership at alamedapost.com slash memberships. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Mastodon. 
Find the postcast wherever you get your podcasts or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. I'm Scott Pula. I'll be back next Friday with episode 42 of the Alameda Postcast.